Yuba City possibly do more than 10% year-over-year growth for the next two or three years. All right, honorable mention, Visalia and Riverside. Visalia especially is interesting because for, for reasons I don't quite understand, it also shows up on the multifamily lists. So I'm not showing you a lot of multifamily lists simply because that's paid data and I don't want to get sued. Uh, but Visalia does show up on both sides. So uh, very, very small town, definitely riskier than Yuba City because it, it's dependent on agriculture. But I think you could see some amazing rent growth and some amazing price growth in Visalia. I think Riverside, I think because of UC too. There's a lot of good things going on in Riverside. The short answer is I mean, it's the only reasonably priced <coughs> section left there in that area, right? Everything else has become very, very expensive. So mm -hmm. you, you've only got two shots in Southern California if you want a reasonable price. Inland Empire or Riverside. Those are your only two choices. Okay, so uh, the 80 cities list that you had, which was uh, aggregation of all the websites, sure. that is different than Yuba City because that's your goal. Okay. That's right. Yuba City didn't show up in that list because it's too small. Okay. Right? So I mean, the whole city is 170,000 people. So it would never show up in one of those lists. But what's, what I like about Yuba City is there's not a lot of people looking there. You're not going to get a lot of price competition. Maybe not until next year. It's just beginning its run. I think it'll do really well in 2019 as well. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. seems to be already per door price is pretty high. Huh? It's mostly driven from Fresno. It could be. Uh, is it is it drivable from Fresno? Maybe. Kind of. Maybe an hour. Within an hour. Maybe. Okay. I, I know very little about it. I, I just have been looking at it and it shows up on the list a number of times. I don't know what is pushing the price up in Visalia. I mean, last time I drove through it, it just seemed to be an agricultural community. But something for you folks to investigate. I don't know the answer. <laughs> so my prediction out of state, which is where my next air ticket is booked, this happens to be not very far. And this city is filled Boise. with potatoes and is Boise, Idaho. Boise, Boise, Idaho is my outperforming state for both our uh, city for both 2018 and 2019. It is now the lowest cost metro in the U.S. Pacific. This is very important because there's a whole bunch of companies that will simply build in the lowest cost metro and they keep building warehouses in the lowest cost metros. So it, it was voted number one uh, in terms of competitiveness in 2016. Voted best cities to live very often. Actually, multiple uh, providers have listed it as best cities to live. Uh, and then for college grads, I follow this a lot. So voted number two in up and come city for college grads. Do you know what is ranked number one in the US? Provo, Provo, Utah is ranked number one. And the number two best state for property tax rates. So lowest property tax rates. I think there's one other state that's lower than that. But a terrific, terrific state to go into. My tickets are booked for next month. Uh, anybody wants to come with me, you're welcome to. <laughs> I, I'll be going every month, hopefully, to try and find more properties there. Boise is a smaller metro than Salt Lake City or, or Provo. Um, and, and they like buying their own stuff. So people in Idaho do like buying uh, local property. So you kind of have to fight them off. But there's definitely options to do new construction there. There's definitely options to buy fix and flips and, and also do rentals. Um, you probably get somewhere in the 6 to 7% cash flow range. But I think that's pretty good for a city where rent price over the next three years is a staggering 36%. So even if it gives you zero cash flow, you'd do really well 36 months from now. Boise, Idaho. Or Wyoming. What's that? Or Wyoming. Possible. I mean, well, I mean, it means it's very well. You, you have it located in Wyoming. Oh, yeah. I do. Oh, let's move that over to here, right? Yeah. Right there. Okay. All right. Oops. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable mention two other cities in case you're interested in Washington. Seattle's very expensive. Spokane's very expensive. But Tacoma, Washington is a terrific city to invest in. Also, if you like Oregon, Salem is a terrific city to invest in over the next two years. Both of them show very high rent growth and reasonable price appreciation. Good question. None of your list showed Memphis, you know, Tennessee, which, which seems to be one of the most you know, popular cities for uh, turnkey pro providers and you know, turnkey properties for cash flow too. 
Yes. So I think you're answering your own questions. The short answer is, it was never up. I think Memphis has always been very popular because there have been lots of people in Memphis that desperately want to sell their properties. <laughs> and lots of investors in California that seem desperate to buy them. So, as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't be buying anything in Memphis unless you truly understand it. Memphis is a block-by-block -block city, which means that you could have a A block next to a D block. So, unless you, you know, want to invest in a Kevlar vest and a nice gun, you should not be buying in Memphis. Most Californians don't know it well enough to buy it, stay away from it. And by the way, no, it, it hasn't shown up in our list for a long time. A short answer is Vancouver is going to be much more expensive and it is really designed to be a flip market because it's an emotional market. There's a lot of Chinese buyers that were buying in Vancouver, BC that no longer can buy because there's a tax and so they're now buying in Vancouver, Washington. They do a lot of cash offers. Any area that's cash offers is great for fix and flips. It is not meant to be a rental appreciation market. So, so far, what you've been showing is single family. Uh, clearly, based on the fact that you're flying to Boise, also means you think that that's a good multifamily. But if you had your top three multifamily markets, what would those be? Hmm. Tacoma, Boise, Orlando. In the U.S., those three. Orlando is really, really hard to beat for anything because of its absolutely stellar job growth. Its, its current job growth and projected job growth beats every city in the U.S. hands down. Nothing comes close. Why does it not show up as number one in your list? I mean, in your list, not the list well, like Orlando is right in the middle at number one here. No, no, the three, list, uh, the three cities that you just talked about? Uh, it's too hot. So uh, I have already tried and failed. Um, you know, some of the people here that know me, I would, every single week, uh, be at San Francisco airport at 10.30 at night. The flight uh, leaves at 11. It gets there at 7 o'clock in the morning in Orlando. I would spend the entire day prospecting, and then my flight coming back, I was gaining three hours, would leave at 5.45 p.m. Get back home by about 8 or 9 because I was gaining time. And I did that. Uh, a large number of times and didn't have any success. Obviously, I was bidding in the 250 unit range. So I'm sure you'll have more success if you're buying you know, single families or duplexes. I'm positive you'll have more success. Just for me, it didn't work out. The market's very hot. I guess, uh, so, 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 uh, so in terms of commercial uh, the real estate, do you have any thoughts to the markets and talks? Uh, Balls, uh, I, I, last year I did a full analysis. The short answer is the hottest kind of in, uh, real estate in the U.S. unquestionably is industrial. And the worst kind of U.S. are stand-up malls. So, you know, that's, that's absolutely the worst. But there is nothing at this point that comes close to industrial. So multifamily, student housing, these are all good places to buy. But industrial, if you know that market, if you understand it, is spectacular. One interesting thing that I noticed is, again, didn't get time to show you this, but there is an organization called AFIRE, A-F-I-R-E. AFIRE is in the Association of Foreign Real Estate Investors. And these are, these are the people that invest billions at a time, right? So super rich people. And every single year since they put their survey out, the top market that they're buying in has either been multifamily or office, depends on what part of the cycle it is. This year, for the first time, it's industrial. So even foreign buyers are looking to buy industrial in the U.S. simply because of the dot-com phenomenon. If you can get into industrial, absolutely nothing like it. When you build your own, since you guys can build a family, do you guys have your own property management and how do you guys outsource it? We outsource property management because it is my fundamental belief that the knowledge needed for property management is local in nature. I'll give you an example. We are experts at leasing up properties. We lease them up three, four times faster than our competitors. We have a team that's in the Philippines that does that. We're awesome at it. We built this new property in Provo, right? The first eight weeks, we get no leads whatsoever. We're using all these different engines, and there's like anemic leads. I was like, crap, I'm not gonna, you know, this is not gonna work. I have 41 units to lease. I, I can't take a year to lease them. 
And here's what it turned out. I asked the property manager locally there that question, and he says, in, in Provo, absolutely nobody use, uses anything except for rental. And as it turned out, he was right. Our lead flow went up 10x the following week. The local market and understanding your markets is key. Having one monolithic property management company that manages different metros is a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Same, same question, multi-family Oh boy, that is a really, really tough question. Uh, Inland Empire, number one. Riverside, number two. Sacramento, number three. Oh, actually, I'd, I'd give it to Stockton. So you, you're going to have trouble finding multifamilies in Sacramento. Go for Stockton. <coughs> so Southern California is better market right now than, than Northern California. Are you talking about industrial? I'm talking about... Uh, no, that was just... That was multifamily. I got it. Right. But next question. When you're talking about industrial, are you talking about warehouses? Very much so. I mean, yeah. there's two kinds of... You know, two or three different kinds of... Uh, of industrial, right? Warehouses are one of the two kinds. The other kind is fulfillment, which is a little bit hotter. It, so the, the way that the warehouse is set up with a number of uh, truck docks, mm -hmm. so it's either warehouse or fulfillment. I'd go for fulfillment if you can. So, you know, just a tip for those that have money to invest and don't necessarily want to invest it with me, there's, there's a number of crowdfunding websites that have, you know, industrial projects up. So when you talk of multifamily homes, what property class are you referring to, A, B, or C? I usually invest in B and C. The vast majority of A's are for pension funds that expect to make 6%. My investors want to make 23%. Yeah. So uh, even B's are hard. So 70% uh, of my portfolio are C's and about 30% are B's. Okay, and do you see the appreciation being lower on, uh, you know, depending on the class? The short answer is, in general, over a 30 year time frame, A's will appreciate more than B's and B's will appreciate more than C's. Mm -hmm. But C's will cash flow a lot more. So it really depends on what your needs are. More questions? Yes? Uh, Phoenix was hot. Phoenix was hot before. Now there's no way to show anywhere. So yeah, I'm really disappointed in Phoenix. I'm very, very fond of Phoenix. I hope that it'll make a comeback. But I have to say that the results for this year have been extremely disappointing. Phoenix is showing up well on the multifamily list, but on the single family side, Compared to where it was last year, it's been a massive drop. Very disappointing. I like Phoenix. Is it a bit like a red city or a crowd is pulling over the lake like Ohio and all going up, right? Not necessarily Ohio, but yes, there's there's definitely migration. It seems to be more southern state migration than Midwest migration. Ohio is a Midwest state, right? So what, what was your question? So my question is, you can say like this, really drop down. Which cities? Short answer is Cleveland is, so that, you know, I, I use Ohio as an example. So the best city in, in Ohio, unquestionably the best, is Columbus, followed by Cincinnati, and then followed by Cleveland. So you absolutely do not want to invest in Cleveland. And then there's places like Dayton, Ohio, which is just sheer suicide to invest in. <laughs> They seem to drag along the bottom for the most part. I mean, Kansas currently on the multifamily side, where we rank 47 my, my markets, is currently ranked 47. <laughs> so uh, Indianapolis is not much better, but it's certainly a lot better than, than Kansas is. So the Kansas City, there are KC Mo, which is the, the Missouri part of Kansas City, does have some good you know, cash flowing rentals, and a lot of people I know invest there. But in general, these are not good markets. You're just investing in a market that you got some cash flow in, right? There's cash flow in every market. Detroit has cash flow. But do I suggest that you go to Detroit? Please, for God's sake, don't do it. <laughs> right? There are no good investments in Detroit in the long term. The city has now done well for two years. But please look at it. There are charts on the web showing Detroit decline in population. Every year for the last 60 years has been down with the exception of five years. So we've now had two of those five years, right? If you really want to gamble, Vegas is a much better bet. Go to a casino. So every, every city has cash flow. I just don't think that a lot of these Midwest cities are great. I believe Columbus, Ohio is different. I believe that Pittsburgh is turning.